Ah, yes, a NAS, a simple little device meant to hold your data and serve your files. The best thing I like about NAS devices or network attached storage devices is the versatility, things you can use it for, and they're just, they're, they're so tiny. But of course, my biggest question with a device like this is how well can it plex? Whether you're protecting yourself on public Wi-Fi, bypassing regional filters, or just simply wanting to download something without the worries of a government or a corporation not liking you for it, a VPN service is a must-have solution. And depending on where you're located, it could be hard to find a VPN fast enough for daily use. That's why the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee of NordVPN is so valuable. Because even though I can tell you I get great speeds and reliability, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. By visiting nordvpn.com slash byte or clicking the link in the video description below, you can test these speeds out for yourself with a heavy discount. And with 30 days to prove its worth, it's a safe way to ensure you're getting what you paid for. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and in today's video, I am featuring the brand new Synology DS1019 Plus. And to be upfront, the Synology DS1019 Plus can handle a lot of things, do a lot of things, and it is just, it is a device that can do a lot of stuff. But I am going to focus on Plex, and specifically the Plex performance. I mean, Synology actually has their own version of a media server, which I have not even checked out yet. They also have software for security cameras, and that's just to name a couple out of all the different things you can do. But I want to talk about Plex. But before I jump into that, let's give you a little bit of that juicy B-roll while covering some of the specs. And no, it's not all the specs. It's just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. Moving on, this is the Synology DS1019 Plus. It has an Intel Celeron CPU, the J3455, which is a quad core 1.5 gigahertz processor. Now the one I have here has two four gigabyte RAM sticks of DDR3L RAM. It actually comes with two gigabit NICs that support failover and link aggregation. And on the bottom, you have the option to install two M.2 NVMe SSDs, which can serve for cache drive for when you're copying data over to the NAS device. And of course, one of the biggest thing here that is going to help the results with my test today is that it does support hardware accelerated transcoding with Plex. Now setting this whole thing up is easy and I will talk more in probably a more thorough review video later on, but really it's just a matter of like plugging it in, finding it on your network, which they actually have like a short URL that you can visit in order to find it on your network. And once you get this thing set up, there's even easy ways to find it by setting up an account which connects you with the Synology website, which allows you to manage your NAS remote which is pretty cool. And actually what I thought was kind of cool too is that this has five drives, wait, one, two, three, four. yeah, this has five drives, you can scale it up to 10 with an add-on, which is interesting. And of course, once you get the basic NAS set up, you can install the Plex Media Server and it just installs like any other Plex Media Server. I mean, you install the app and then you go and manage it via the web and that's where you set up things like your library. And yes, I am kind of skipping over the volume creation, but you do have to assign hard drives to the volume. And on that note, I, I have to say something. I actually wanna give a big shout out to Seagate. They loaned me a couple hard drives specifically just for this testing. Now these are the Iron Wolf four terabyte Seagate drives that are specifically designed for NAS units. Apparently they come with a lot of built-in features for drive health and data recovery and include two years rescue recovery data plan, which is really great if the hard drive fails because you wanna, you wanna have that option to recover your data. It's a very good thing. So let's get into the meat and potatoes and I tested three different video files for today's video. Now, if you've watched previous videos on my channel in the past, my go-to test media file for a movie is always Back to the Future because it is the single best movie ever created, Fight Me, if you don't agree. I'm just, I'm just kidding, I'm not a fighter. Like, I'm just, you know. Like, the file in question is an H.264 encoded file that is roughly about 19 megabits per second bitrate. And for the second video that I tested, which I will probably blur out in order just to try to avoid getting dinged by the big companies, it is Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, Dead, Dead Men Tell No Tales. 
Anyways, it's a 4K video file, about 26 megabits per second, and it has HEVC encoded. And the third video file is actually because I was curious and there's a little bit more backstory to it, but basically I re-encoded the back to the future video file to be H.265 or HEVC. Now, one quick note is that I did use the hardware accelerated transcoding, which as far as I know is a Plex Pass feature. So if you don't see this option, you probably need the Plex Pass in order to do it. So just, you know, plugging that in there. There's always somebody who's like, hey, this is a Plex Pass feature and you didn't say it. So I said it. And actually I tested it before enabling the hardware accelerated transcoding and I was only able to get four streams transcoded at the same time. Now this is going from my 19 megabits per second file all the way down to two megabits per second. I always test to two megabits per second and I only got four. It's very, very, very disappointing to only get four until you realize that the hardware acceleration isn't on and then and then you enable it and then holy bananas it changes everything so starting off with hardware acceleration on the two 1080 files one in h.264 one in h.265 the h.265 was actually able to transcode nine streams simultaneously which is kind of crazy for this tiny little box nine streams it's a nas i did not expect that but nine streams. And technically, technically speaking, I was able to start a 10th, but it was a terrible experience waiting for that. And it like caused some other videos to start buffering, but technically I got 10, but nine was the comfort zone right there. So nine streams with HEVC. That's pretty good. And it changed a little bit, not too much, but with H.264, I was able to get 10 separate streams all at the same time reliably, and it was actually a good experience. As for an 11th stream, I kind of sort of got it to work, but it just was not reliable, and it kind of made random streams start to stutter. So uh, 10 is the reliable number here when it comes to H.264, at least with my test video file. Which a little side note, I reviewed a long time ago, probably two, two and a half years ago, a Western Digital NAS, of course, same size, about the same capacity here, and it was only able to do like four or five streams. So this is a little bit before hardware acceleration. So definitely times have changed and I'm definitely happy that we're able to squeeze way more power out of these tiny devices than we were even a couple and a half years ago. So that's interesting. Moving on to 4K, which I had very little expectations for because 4K definitely makes people's hardware crumble. It's just a thing, 4K is big. And honestly, I don't even agree with 4K transcoding. I mean, it's like, why would you take such a massive file and take it down to something like two megabits per second. You know, just get a smaller file. But hey, to each their own. Either way, this thing touts that it is a dual stream 4K transcoder, which I take that as you can transcode two 4K streams at the same time. But when I tested it with my 26 megabits per second 4K video file, I was actually able to get three streams. I actually almost got four streams, but turns out that was fake news. So three streams, that's still pretty good for 4K transcoding, three streams. And I know my server is outdated. If you guys are familiar with Zeus, built it a couple years ago, it was already old recycled enterprise hardware. Uh, it was cheap and it does what I need to do and I'm definitely eager to upgrade. But now that I see a device like this, that's this small, that is almost playing the same ball game as my dual Xeon server, that really tells me I need to upgrade. I need, I need to build a new server because this thing is trying to hang with my server now. And I don't, I don't know what to think about that. I'm just gonna whip that credit card out. So guys, check out the links down below to find out more information about this NAS. Yes, I think it is amazing. I think the numbers that it is putting out is probably more than enough to handle the average or maybe even the above average Plexer. I mean, let's be real. If you share your library with a couple few people and you're watching it yourself, that's four or five, maybe six streams at the same time. And if you have a device that can take a 19 megabit per second bitrate file all the way down to two megabits per second, nine of them at a time, 10 of them at a time. Yeah, color me impressed. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or ideas, post them down in the comments below. I plan on doing follow-up videos, of course, that's going to cover things like the security camera software options. I might even check out the built-in media server option that you can do, like their own little branded thing. I don't know anything about it, but it's kind of piqued my interest a little bit just from the information they sent me. If you guys want to see anything else though, let me know. Like and subscribe and have yourself a good night.